the weird and wonderful Echidna. Australia is home to some of the most unique animals on earth. Kangaroos and koalas live here. A giant bird called the emu does too. Of all the creatures that live in Australia, the Echidna is one of the strangest. This small creature makes its home in Australia and also on the island of New Guinea. The Echidna is also known by its common name, the Spiny Anteater. The name describes two of the Echidna's amazing traits. All Echidnas have spines. Some eat ants, but those are only two of the traits of this strange and wonderful creature. If you met an Echidna, you might have a hard time figuring out what kind of animal it is. To begin with, the Echidna has a beak, but it doesn't have feathers and it doesn't fly, so it's not a bird. The Echidna lays soft eggs like a snake does, but the Echidna is not a reptile. The Echidna is a mammal. The Echidna belongs to a group of mammals known as monotremes. They are the only mammals on earth that lay eggs. There are only two kinds of monotremes. One is the Echidna and the other is the platypus. Monotremes have lived on Earth longer than any other mammals. Several adaptations have helped them to thrive. Short-billed Echidna The one species of short-beaked Echidna lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. The Echidna's beak is a rare feature among mammals. It's also a fabulously adapted tool for finding food. Echidnas live in forested areas and feed on insects, worms, and other tiny creatures. An echidna's beak is long and pointy. However, the beak doesn't have two halves that open like a bird's beak. Instead, the echidna uses its beak as a digging tool. It pokes and prods to find its prey. The echidna's beak is tough. In fact, it's strong enough to break open a rotten log or dig into the soil in search of a tasty meal. The most amazing thing about the Echidna's beak is something you can't see. The beak has sensors inside it. The sensors detect electrical signals given off by living creatures. That means an Echidna can locate prey without seeing, hearing, or touching it. It's kind of a mammal superpower. The three species of long beak Echidnas are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. Long-billed Echidna an echidna's mouth is small and it has no teeth. The echidna uses its beak to crush a worm or insect into tiny pieces. Then it takes the pieces into its mouth and swallows them. Scientists classify echidnas according to beak length. There are short-beaked echidnas and long-beaked echidnas. The one species of short-beaked echidnas lives throughout Australia and on New Guinea. The three species of long-beaked echidnas are found exclusively on the island of New Guinea. If you were to see an echidna in person, the first thing you might notice is its coat of spines. The spines are short and hollow. They are made of carotene, the same material that makes up your hair and fingernails. Can you find me? The colors of an echidna's fur and spines help it blend into its surroundings. An echidna's spines are like a coat of armor. They protect the echidna from predators such as the dingo a kind of wild dog. When a predator approaches, an echidna rolls itself up into a ball. The ball appears to be nothing but spines. Predators usually think twice before chomping down. In addition, the echidna's spines play another important role. They serve as camouflage to help the animal hide from predators. The spines are colored with sections of white, black, and brown. The spines blend well with the surrounding colors of rocks, soil, and dead leaves. Like all other mammals, the echidna also has fur, though some echidnas are furrier than others. The amount of fur depends upon where the echidnas live. Echidnas occupy a range of habitats from the chillier regions of Australia to warmer, drier places in New Guinea. The ones in colder areas tend to have more fur. Those in warmer climates have less. Ouch! The strong, sharp spines of an echidna help keep it safe from predators. What's for dinner? The echidna has many features, like its long tongue, that are adapted to meet its needs. If you think the echidna's beak and spines are incredible, 
Wait until you see its tongue. The echidna's tongue is a simply amazing tool, and it's perfectly adapted to capture the kind of prey the echidna needs. There are two different kinds of echidna tongues. That's because different kinds of echidnas eat different kinds of food. One type of echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The other type has a short tongue that is covered with hooks. It may seem backward, but the short-beaked echidna has a long, sticky tongue. The tongue is extremely flexible. It's great for grabbing ants, termites, and other tiny prey. The short-beaked echidna is an expert at flicking its tongue into the nooks and crannies where those animals live. The long-beaked echidna doesn't eat any ants at all. In fact, worms are its only prey. But its tongue is perfectly adapted for worm catching. The long-beaked echidna probes the soil with its beak. When it finds a worm, it sticks out its tongue. The tiny hooks on the tongue hook into the earthworm. Then the echidna pulls its tongue back into its mouth and the earthworm becomes lunch. When it comes to predators, the echidna has another secret weapon. It's claws. When an echidna is startled or attacked, it hides by doing something no other mammal in the world can do. It digs itself straight down into the ground. How does the echidna pull off this trick? The claws play a big role. Tough and heavy, they can move a lot of dirt in a short amount of time. Other adaptations help the claws do their job. First of all, the echidna has a strong skeleton. Second, the echidna might be small, but it's incredibly muscular. Those muscles can pull hard to dig very fast. When a predator approaches, the claws, skeleton, and muscles of the echidna go to work. In seconds, the small animal can burrow almost completely into the earth. Once the echidna is dug in, its camouflage spines make it very hard to see. And because the only part that's exposed is spines, many predators will pass it by. What's the echidna's most amazing adaptation? Some people might think it is the beak. Others might vote for the spines or the echidna's digging ability. But the echidna has another amazing adaptation that you can't see. It's a special layer of muscle that wraps around the echidna's whole body. This muscle layer makes the echidna's body very strong. And even more important, it allows the echidna to change its shape. It can roll itself up into a ball, or it can flatten itself to the thickness of a spiny pancake. That extreme flexibility comes in handy. The echidna can squish itself flat to squeeze into a hiding spot when a predator lurks. It can turn itself into a ball of spines to protect itself from a hungry dingo. Amazing Adaptations The echidna's unusual muscles allow it to change shape. Flat as a pancake. The echidna has one more unique feature. The echidna's body temperature is about 85 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. In case you are wondering, your own body temperature is a toasty 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. That means the echidna has a lower body temperature than any other mammal. Scientists think that a cool body temperature might help the echidna live longer. Surprisingly, echidnas live as long as 45 years in the wild. Other small mammals don't live nearly as long. When they need to, echidnas can turn down their body temperature even lower than normal. When they do this, all their body functions, such as breathing, heart rate, and digestion, slow down too. This is called torpor, and it's a bit like hibernation. When in torpor, the echidna uses less energy, so it needs less food. This is useful during the winter, when prey is harder to find. It's also helpful during times of crisis, such as when a forest fire occurs. Scientists think this trait is one reason that the echidna has managed to survive, but it's just one of the adaptations that make the tiny, spiny echidna one of the most amazing creatures on Earth. Hollow logs can provide a short-beaked echidna both food and shelter. The Very Peculiar Platypus in the late 1700s, British scientists got their first glimpse of a platypus. Or rather, they received a platypus specimen that someone had sent them from Australia. At first, they thought it was a joke. It looked as if someone had stitched a duck's bill and webbed feet to the skin of an otter or beaver. 
The platypus does look as if it were put together by a mad scientist. However, its seemingly strange collection of features and adaptations helps the platypus to survive in its Australian home. A most unlikely mammal. The platypus is a mammal, just like a mouse or a dog. It is a warm-blooded animal with a backbone, and it is covered with fur. The average platypus is about 18 inches long from nose to tail. It weighs anywhere from 1.5 to around 5 pounds. Males are generally larger than females. The platypus may live 13 or more years in the wild and 20 or more in captivity. A platypus does not have teeth. Instead, it has grinding plates inside its mouth. A platypus spends as much as 10 hours a day in the water. Therefore, lakes, rivers, and streams are always part of a platypus's habitat. A platypus usually forages or hunts for food at night. It swims underwater in search of insects, shellfish, and worms. A single dive usually lasts for a minute or two. While underwater, the platypus collects food from the river bottom and stores it in cheek pouches. When not looking for food, the platypus shelters in its burrow. A platypus burrow is usually built in the bank of a river or stream. Sometimes, a platypus uses rocky spots along the edge of the water as shelter. At times, it may make its burrow under logs or among the roots of a tree for protection. In terms of size, traits, and behavior, the platypus is much like other mammals. But this is where the similarities end. The platypus is a special kind of mammal called a monotreme. The only other monotreme is the echidna, also called the spiny anteater. Like the platypus, the echidna is found in Australia, though echidnas also live in New Guinea. All other mammals give birth to live young. However, monotremes lay eggs. This is just one of the many characteristics that make the platypus unusual. Duck-like features the platypus's duck-like bill is its most notable feature, and its web feet are just as striking. Its bill and feet make it look more like a strange bird than a mammal. However, these features play important roles in survival. Because the platypus hunts for food underwater, swimming skills are vital to survival. A platypus's web feet make it an excellent swimmer. Using a rowing motion, first one front foot, then the other, the animal moves easily through the water. It can also hover in one spot, even against the current, while it searches for something to eat. The platypus's bill is flexible but strong. The animal uses it to push dirt aside when burrowing in riverbanks. Underwater, a platypus closes its eyes, ears, and nostrils. But how can the animal find food? Here is where the platypus's extraordinary bill comes into play. Unlike a duck's hard bill, a platypus's bill is rubbery. It serves as the platypus's sense organ when under the water. The bill has sensors that pick up electrical signals from prey. Eggs like a reptile. Platypus's eggs aren't like the hard oval eggs that most birds lay. Instead, platypus eggs are similar to the round, leathery eggs that reptiles such as lizards and turtles lay. The leathery shells are flexible. They are less likely to break during incubation than a hard-shelled egg would be. The female platypus lays one to three eggs. She lays the eggs in a deep burrow and incubates them for about 10 days. When the baby platypuses hatch, they are naked and blind. Only the female platypus cares for the young. Like other mammals, the female platypus feeds milk to her young. When the platypuses are three to four months old, they leave the burrow. At that point, they have a full coat of fur. They have to learn how to swim and find food for themselves. A platypus egg is about the same diameter as a dime. Platypus poison. The male platypus has a particular feature that the female does not share. Like some species of insects, spiders, and snakes, the male platypus has venom. Sharp spurs on the heels of its hind feet deliver the venom, which is produced by a special gland in the male's thigh. Given a choice, a platypus dives underwater to escape a predator, or it dashes down a burrow. 
but if there is no choice, a male platypus uses its spurs to protect itself. A male platypus also uses its spurs when competing with other males for mates or territory. A well-adapted oddity. The platypus might be the oddest looking creature on earth. It seems to be part duck, otter, and beaver, and part snake and spider too. It's a hodgepodge of strange features that don't seem to belong together. It shares the basic features of all mammals, but unlike other mammals, the platypus does not give birth to live young. It lays leathery eggs instead. The duck bill and webbed feet make it well suited for its habitat, and similar to a spider or snake, a platypus can defend itself with venom. The platypus looks like an animal made up of spare parts but these seemingly unlikely adaptations allow the platypus to find food, protect itself, and reproduce successfully. This ensures the survival of these fascinating creatures.